Hello there, this is Pixel. Um, it's been a long time since I um, decided to actually do some stuff or one of that. I've been pretty lazy. A lot of stuff's been going on. I have been wanting to make this vid for quite some time, actually. I think it's been almost about three months. Um, this is not going to be anything too serious. I'm not going to blabble along. Well, I am going to blabble. Um, so stick around for that. But I just wanted to briefly put into some context. So me and R2 decided to start work on a different type of furnace array. The current designs mainly were centered around Obi's. Um, our link is in, as well in the description. His was actually pretty well, it was pretty nice, but for the time it was okay-ish. There was a lot of improvements to make. Of course, we, me and R2 took up on ourselves to try some stuff out. We learned a lot of stuff. This is just one of our, like, our first prototypes. It's quite the abomination. Um, but this this was kind of the segue into what I'm going to be talking around today. Um, as we go through, you'll see more and more prototypes of what was going on. The main idea was that we needed to make uh, a 96 furnace array. So 96 items usually is a two-loop system. So you have 48 items going one way, 48 items going the other way. The reason why we use for we use 96 items is based on how easy it is to count them. Um, 64, of course, is, is a nice rounded stack. However, to do the timings for 64 items is quite cancerous. And that leads me to this system over here. Um, one day, me and Damon were messing around a little bit, and I came up with the idea somewhere at the floor over there of why do we not why time the minecart over where the hoppers are unlocked. So I think this was the first one. I'm not too sure. I think this actually was, yeah. This is the first kind of concept that we tried out. And what this essentially showed us was that we could have a minecart traveling at the same speed as the repeater lines. And we could have about, if the minecart was about sitting over there, we'd have about that unlocked to about here. So there, there'll be a little bit more in the front a little bit less in the front compared to the back because the items would need to be first of all transferred into the hopper then into the furnace and we couldn't lock it um like earlier before then um i'll maybe link there's an unlisted video of us actually first trying this thing out but this side over here is where it really like got get, um got really going so we first discovered like a few different ways of how we can run this and then we came up with this i think is this one over here there's so many variations of this one. This one over here, which was is essentially the cheapest in a way. There's not. I don't think there's too much else you can really do with this. Um, and this is kind of the base for what I'm going to talk about today. So this concept works. Uh, first of all, a bit of a disclaimer. I do not mind if you use this concept. I mean, you're welcome to credit me for saying, listen, this is my idea. You're welcome to uh, publish your own furnace array and your thing. I'd happily love to see that. I'm really looking forward to see what people do with this, even though it is really, really basic, it is uh, quite revolutionary in the sense that it cuts down the lag significantly. Um, we're not even having, I think it's, we worked out to be almost one sixteenth of the hoppers open while this module's running. The circuit was set up by Damon, um, and it's extremely, extremely simple for a little bit of a proof of concept over here we've just got some furnaces lined up and we're just doing the top bit over here if we just throw in a stack over here this is a round one i think this is 48 exactly furnaces if we launch this at the time you can see as the micro comes along it unlocks the hoppers just at the right moments for the items to flow down into it and every single furnace over here will have one item and there'll be no items left in the hoppers and then all of this will be locked up and then, of course, there's 16 items over here, 48 furnaces. So this kind of laid the basis of pretty much everything here. So you could essentially just use this and, of course, just attach a chest to it and then unload it exactly to how many items you wanted here. But this wasn't really good for us. We have to do have some standards. Um, so then we decided to move on to what me and R2 were doing, except move it to a little bit of a larger scale. This was, I think, the seventh or eighth version. This one was, yet again, another abomination. 
we worked by running the mine count over here and it would be timed with the fuel actually. Now, timing with the fuel was not perfect. Um, we did have an idea or concept for how we were going to distribute the fuel because you need, let's say you're doing coal where you need one to eight items. So for every eight items that you're smelting, one of them needs to be in. Um, and yet again, this can that it can also be noted that there could possibly be another like um, downside to this: the fact that you need to. I mean, you can work around it, but then you're getting very complex with the logic, um, trying to make it so that it runs perfectly um, with let's say half full shulker boxes and stuff like that. The way this works is essentially uh, very similar to pretty much everything else, except it snakes up a little bit over here. This was the first one I, uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later. Why I just actually I can talk about it now. I hate this layout. Mainly because I do, th I think we should start at the top with the unloading, with the loading of it. So in this case, this part will be up over here and we move downwards rather. This also works by we, un we load it up with 96 items over there. They run along here. Fuel also runs along with it. The fuel only goes once though. Comes along here. By the time it gets over here, it is completely empty. It gets dropped down all the way onto this rail over here. And by the time it gets back, these items would have finished smelting. But even though this hopper is locked, the hopper minecart can still draw the items from it, which means that we don't have to unlock the hoppers, a lot less lag, and this will continuously just run on. Um, you can argue that you could use curvy rails. Um, we found them no, they weren't beneficial at all especially for this top bit over here, it just caused us like an absolute aneurysm and I didn't have enough Adderall to just keep up with like the constant issues that we had to experience. Um, yet again, this one's a little bit um, quite bulky. We could have just put the repeaters on top there, drop this thing a lot lower, of course, reduce the cost a bit by just like doing that. Um, and then this was yet again timed with this. So even if the fuel had to run, Let's say we're running our fields so if we just get like, uh, we can get a stack of coal blocks if we really wanted to. Run it, we can see it unloading all of that. I don't think there's any items in it. No, there's no items in it. So we can wait for this thing to come around. I haven't tested this thing, so I have no idea um, what state it is in. So we'll have to see about that. I think it should be working. Um, oh yes, there's 96, so we're missing some items, so we'll only be running 64 items in this now. But if we throw in, we can throw in that amount of items. Um, let's see this thing work, yeah, so you'll see them all unlocking there. Usually we run these things, but at the same time you can actually see the hoppers um, as they unlock, and of course this bottom bit is not going to work because I didn't put enough items in it. Um, funny thing about these timings though, um, these timings are very odd. Um, you, you kind of have to eyeball it. Chunks don't really actually matter. Of course, this, the central, what I'm going to call the, this is your, if this is your bank area over here, actually, I think this is actually perfect because yeah. So this was the 32 items that weren't taken because we put in two stacks and there's the 64 items that were smelted because we only put it a stack of coal in, of coal into the system. So that was just at running. I totally forgot that it also picks it up at the same time. Um, but you'll notice it's a bit erratic. So you need to still chunk a line this part, but the bank area, the actual furnaces, follow a, a slight pattern of twos and threes, mainly twos, and then a, occasionally a three like staggered out. And then in this case, we did a three, four, but in the newer ones, we worked out that a single three is fine. That is another, I wouldn't call it a disadvantage. It just, it just annoyed me a little bit, but it's nothing we could really do about it. Um, I think this is another V, this is another, I can't remember what version this is, but uh, this, yet again, if you want to do these rails, eh, they're actually not that hard to do. It really isn't. Um, I th I cannot name who, who found this out. I know that Take One showed me how to do it. Um, I'm going to do with a powered rail just to show, um, because most, in this case, we've used a lot of... Um, of powered rails in this that have this the slight curve especially for gaining some extra momentum um on the system so if you push this this will rail will so sort of pop up i don't even think you actually need to power that rail no, you don't actually need to power that rail 
as long as it's not kept there, then you don't need to even need to do that. However, when you depower, it will break. Um, another thing I don't think actually think it's implemented into this is that, oh no, it is. So there's this very, very weird behavior where if you run um, a hopper minecart or, yeah, specifically a hopper minecart over a detector rail that has been powered, you will lock the, it will lock the detector rail. Nobody really knows why. Um, but if we, you can actually demonstrate this quite easily just by going like, and if we run another one over it like this, so those are definitely overlapping. We can even push this a little bit. Is that going to work? Yeah. So these are now both locked. So we can store them efficiently. And what you can do is you can run them over an unpowered one. So in that case, we run them over this one over here. Um, it will unlock them. So we are using very, very little. Um, it's very, not as laggy um, up over here. Um, there's not too much else to talk about this bottom section here, besides the fact that we decided to make it so that the shulker box that you would put in, that you would dispense from it where the items would get taken out of, would also be used to, uh, would also be filled up. Um, this load is quite bad. I, I don't like it at all. Um, I think this one even has a buffer box. I can't remember. I think the first one did. Um, but the, the, the only issue is then that you have to wait for it. So you can't unload, you can have all the minecarts you want, sure, but then you're just hitting territories where you're just creating extra lag for whatever speed, um, more, like minimal speed that you're getting more. So if you do plan on doing it, I wouldn't actually do the same. I would still have a buffer box. I would have a single buffer box. So the minute the items come to you downloaded, um, it starts filling that other shulker box and then it just keeps the shulker box as a thing. But I, I thought it was quite a nice feature, the fact that it used that same shulker box um, that it inputted to be outputted, um, but it did give us quite a bit of pain. Um, another thing you also going to have to be quite wary of is rails. Now rails uh, in bedrock are never really good. Um, when cloning this thing or building this in survival, um, I'd suggest you build it in the positive Z direction. Uh, but if you do want to clone it around, um, good luck. Uh, because all these rails will completely just fuck themselves, um, especially around about over here where we have like these fragile rails over here. Um, there's not too much else actually besides the fact that this is this looks extremely complex, and some of it is, but it really isn't. This is mainly to read the shock box level. We start the global clock that counts ninety six items. The ninety six items is is then used on this uh, comparator, this uh, hopper pulse extender to make sure that the minecart leaves before the box is broken. See, we lock that bottom hopper over there by this detector rail over here. So when the minecart leaves, only then can the box be broken. This just shoots the minecart back up to the top there. We've got a 4x loader, I think over here. Yeah, this 4x loader that we use on the shulker box over here. There's nothing too complex. There's usually some minecarts over here, but I think we got lost in the cloning. Same system over here. We essentially just accelerate um, them up over here. Also, there's a bit of an empty box detection. I would highly recommend that. Uh, I don't know if we can catch it, but it gets pushed up over there. Yeah. So usually there, so in this case, this is being locked because if you notice around about over here, there's this activator rail. That activator rail locks it. So you'll see it actually coming up now. It gets shot up. And then it gets put up over there. And then this is just slowly distributed. These will be dropped down one by one. And that's it. Um, there is quite a few layouts for this thing. Now, I, I, we do have one coming up now that I was going to build and I was going to finish it off. I just haven't found the motivation ready to do it. Um, the fact that it is bulkier is not really an issue to me. I do not think it is something that should be like hugely worried about. The fact that it is so much more lag friendly, though, is something that it, people should be taking into um, consideration. Um, if you do attend to stack these, um, like multi modules, do them chunk wise. Don't try and make them so they can sit right next to each other. Yes, it looks nice. Will it work? No. Especially like if you have a chunk border like crossing this area over here for whatever reason, we like we couldn't get it to work over here. Um, 
it just everything just kept broken. We weren't we weren't sure. The timings were off. Some repeaters weren't powered. Um, just the general bedrock stuff, really. Um, the concept of the the curvy rails and all of that. Go ahead, be my guest. I cannot guarantee that you'll find any benefits in those. Making a smaller version of this would definitely be something that I'd be interested in to, to see because it is quite an interesting um, approach of it. However, I only think it's going to be extremely beneficial on large scales. So be my guest if you want to build a small one of these. But in realistic claims, go big or go home, really. Even build a single module like this. Um, I don't think I'll be releasing this module anytime soon um, or any of these other modules. I've got another project going up over there that I can't really show. I might make a video on it later today, I'll see. But um, it is still it is still a cool concept and I just wanted to share it and I hope um, people can actually use it. Yet again, if you want to use it, give me a shout out. I'd love to see what you guys are making with it. Um, and otherwise, um, there's not much else for me to say other than uh, stay safe and have a good one. Cheers.